ensure your water parameters are always correct. 25 degrees, um, 1.023 salt level, pH of 8.4, KH of up to 200, no ammonia, no nitride, as little as possible nitrate, um, 450 calcium and no phosphate. Now what I want to suggest to you is if your water is not quite right, your aquarium over time is going to be not quite right. So once again, things take time to show up. So if you have any of these levels not quite right, over a long period of time, there is going to be some sort of cost. And I might be talking one year, I might be talking two years, I might be talking a month, depending on how out it is. So what I'm really encouraging you to do is keep your levels right. One of the most overlooked ones is phosphate. Now phosphate is a low level organic, which in the wild is something like 0.004 or something like that, very, very low, well under what we can test for. Now, in the wild, um, phosphate is not an issue on a natural, healthy coral reef because you've got this, the water comes down, the rain washes across your mountains, across your land, picks up all the phosphorus and nitrogen and whatever is also on the land goes into the rivers. The water runs down the rivers, the rivers are full of algae, but funny enough, there's no corals in it. Then the river runs down and goes past your mangroves, which should be there. That's why the, um, the environmentalists jump up and down when the developers take that beautiful corner spot between the river and the ocean, because what they do is they wipe out the mangroves. And when you wipe out the mangroves, you wipe out the reef that's actually in front of it. Because those mangroves are there as nutrient sinks. They're pulling out a lot of the nitrates of the phosphates and, and basically working as a nutrient sink to protect the reef. They filter it. Then you've got your colurba beds, which are usually found out a bit further. And once again, in all this area, there's no corals, or very little. And then, no less than 500 metres away, is a beautiful, healthy, thriving coral reef with no algae and no sedimentation. So, the, one of the, the variable is not light, because let's say that you've got 5 metres of water and 5 metres of water, it's the same light. The variable is almost always phosphate. So nitrate is easy to control, providing that we're using high quality medium such as this. The nitrate, unless you're using biovolves, nitrate should not be a problem. So, um, you've got this water going down, it's sucking all of the phosphate out, and by the time it gets to the reef, it's pretty much void of nutrients. It's a very, very low level, lower than we can actually test. So therefore, we then put that to the relevance of our aquarium. If you're getting much algae growing in your aquarium, that means that you are getting those nutrients. And the way that we remove those nutrients is using phosphate sponges. The only phosphate sponge that we have available at the moment is Phosol. Um, it's okay. But I would normally be trying to encourage you to get Phosban because it's a ferric iron phosphate remover and it's far, far better, but it's not available in Australia right now only because it's sold out. And then there's also another phosphate remover which is even better than that, which is not available in Australia at the moment either but uh, there will be another shipment coming hopefully in about eight weeks which is called polyfilter. And basically what these things do is act like a sponge to suck out phosphate. Because if your aquarium is like a large coral reef, there's no algae there. So you shouldn't have any sorts of troubles with algae unless you've got abundance of phosphates. Now phosphates are going to be naturally occurring. Phosphates are a result of breakdown of your fish food. Phosphates come in through tap water. Phosphates are <coughs> something that are going to be present. And the only way you're going to control it is by controlling it. So water changes will help to defuse the levels down, but essentially using a phosphate sponge is going to be really important. So providing we have a phosphate level of zero, our tank rate basically is no algae. <coughs> so if we focus on our phosphate, we don't have algae. If we focus on our algae, we always get more algae. Because what happens if you clean off your algae? You get more algae because you're not focusing on the cause of the algae, which is the phosphate. Also look at the colour of the algae. So for example, if you're getting that light brown algae everywhere, who finds that they do a water change, then they get this light brown algae growing everywhere. If you find that, that means that um, you're getting too much silicate in your aquarium, which is, comes out of tap water. So you can consider using RO water instead of tap water, and then you won't get that light brown algae anymore. 
So um, if you are getting algae in your aquarium, come and talk to me because it just means that there's too much of something. And it's usually very easy to control, but not immediate. So anything that we do biologically takes time to show up. So once again, if, I, if you get your phosphate level to zero, then nothing will happen. If you keep it at zero for three weeks, then you can expect your algae to start dying. If you keep it at three weeks after that, then you pretty much expect your algae to be gone. Because so often people say, I've got algae, I'll try a phosphate remover. They put in a phosphate remover, and let's say that this level here represents zero, and they've got, say, an algae, a phosphate level of six. Then they use the phosphate remover, and they get closer to the mark, but what I'm here to tell you is you don't get any results until you're there. And even when you're there, you don't get any results for three weeks. And then even when three weeks after that, it doesn't fix it. Because you're basically looking at, you've got to use the phosphate remover, then you might get here, then you might do a water change, then you might get here, then you might need more phosphate remover to get to zero. And it all starts when you're at zero. When you're at zero, phosphate doesn't mean you fix the problem at all. It means you start, you're there, you start it. So you get the level to zero, then three weeks after it's zero, almost like clockwork, you'll find your algae sure enough starts dying off. Then, about three weeks after it started dying off, you'll find it's all gone. No more algae in your fish tank. You're having no problem whatsoever. Almost like clockwork. So, so that all makes sense, guys? So phosphate is your key to algae. Alright, so let's keep moving. So we're ensuring adequate water flow when we're really coming to grips with the fact that if it's not right, it's not right. The next thing I want to just brief on a little bit more is temperature. Is that 25 degrees is the temperature that we want. Now in natural coral reefs, the temperature can get well and truly over 25 degrees, but it's usually only for quite short periods of time. Now in an aquarium, it becomes a major problem for many, many reasons. First of all, is every degree we go up in temperature, we significantly go down in oxygen. And there's many other relationships which temperature is involved in. Other problems that high temperatures can cause, and I'm talking 27, 28 temperatures around there, can also cause mass spawning in the aquarium, which, um, which is where all your corals breed at once. And if you're not ready for it, let me promise you it's not a good thing, because it makes a real big mess and, and um, it's not a good thing. And that usually doesn't happen at all. It's usually triggered by light periods at a temperature of 25 degrees. So if you run a temperature of 25 degrees, you'll find that is the very first and most important step to keeping a good thriving coral reef aquarium. And remember, 27 degrees is not 25 degrees. 27 degrees is not good enough. It's maybe a coral that might last a season or two seasons. It needs to be 25 degrees. So if you're running a tank that runs in winter at 28, 29, just remember that your corals are not going to thrive forever. So you need to look at how are you going to do that. Either you need to blow a fan across your sample top or top of the water to allow um, <coughs> evaporative cooling, or get yourself a chiller. Chillers these days are surprisingly not that expensive. For your average small aquarium, you'd be spending three or four hundred dollars on a chiller. For a bigger aquarium, you might be spending more like eight hundred or thousand dollars. Remember that in that big aquarium that you spent eight hundred to thousand dollars on a chiller, you would have maybe two thousand dollars, one fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars of the coral in. So it doesn't it really does make sense to protect it. So, particularly being in Australia, which is a relatively hot country, every person that wants to be serious about a reef aquarium, get yourself a chiller. 